Thanks for the support as a channel member, Mumongu Gaming. I know this is what I wanted. I know this is what we've been working for t for years and years and years. I mean, I have to enjoy it. Premier League's really hard. Hello and welcome to part 93 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in the Premier League. Saying that doesn't get old. Uh, we're at home against Aston Villa. We're away against Liverpool. Since you were last with me, it's it's been tough. It's been a challenge. We won 10-0 against Bedford in a friendly because we were trying to get some <laughs> some kind of oomph back into us. I mean, we've done all right in the, in the Carabao Cup. We beat Leighton Orient 6-1. We beat Luton 5-0. Um, we even had a decent result, or a couple of decent results in the Premier League, to be honest. Um, I think, yeah, you saw us beat Leicester in the last episode. We have one other win. We beat Newcastle. Um, we got absolutely spanked 5-0 by Norwich. Um, we lost to Bournemouth, spanked again by Spurs. Um, the table isn't perfect. Um, we're currently seven games played, six points on the board. So we are behind the all-important Kev ratio that we spoke about yesterday. But if we can win either of these matches, we'll move back above it. If we can end this episode nine points from our first nine matches, that would be superb. And the only way we're going to do that is by beating Aston Villa, because we're certainly not going to beat Liverpool away from home. But if you remember, I mentioned in yesterday's episode, Aston Villa stole a wonder kid that we wanted. Um, it's this guy, Murat Arslan, um, who's 19 years old. He's a left back. Um, he's from Turkey. He was um, he was 18 when we were looking at him in the summer when he came up on my scout report. He is a genuine wonder kid uh, that they were able to go out and spend 19 million pounds on. This is the kind of thing we're up against in the Premier League because Aston Villa, who were able to do that, are in 15th place. They're only one point ahead of us, and we have to be able to beat teams like that if we're going to stay in this league. And at the moment, it does feel like that's a big if. Um, this is going to be the team that we send out there to face them. Um, we've uh, we've we've tried lots of different combinations of players, but we keep coming back to this one. And I think it's this has got to be the system that either gets us promoted, promoted that keeps us in the Premier League, or we get relegated trying to stay in the Premier League doing this because anything any more defensive just isn't working. We'll try a more defensive thing away against Liverpool in the next game because, as you can see, away games have not gone well for us so far, no matter what we've done. So I think we'll try a counter-attacking system against Liverpool. But we've got to try and beat Villa. And to do that, we're sending out Alex Williams in goal, a back four of McCartan, Davies, Barr and Curry, Akani and Alibasic in midfield, Richards, Hodgkinson and Renan, then supporting Costa Bile up front. Um, I think McCartan is now my first choice left back, by the way. Um, Francis has really struggled with the step up to the Premier League. He's getting found out a lot. I think it's the extra responsibility of having Mr. Slow, Harrison Davies alongside him, who is still scoring goals. He's still incredible in the air. He is a great stopper, um, but he very much needs um, cover either side of him. He's got Joe Barr one side, um, and McCartan does a better job on the other. And Nathan Curry has just got him sent off. He got himself sent off in the first two minutes of this must-win game. I have to ask myself what the hell he thinks he's doing there. That was insane. Um, we don't... Oh, we do have Francis on the bench. So Francis is going to have to, Francis is gonna have to come on. Um, I guess we have to take off one of Akani and Ali Basic and drop Hodgkinson deeper is all we can really do, I think. So I guess... Akani makes way for Francis. We drop him in there like that. And then Hodgkinson can play like this. We'll put him on support. At least he's not completely defensive. And now, I mean, that's a big problem because we were just talking about how we needed to win this game. We're not going to win it with 10 men for the entire match, are we? Nathan Curry unacceptable what he's just done there. McCartan with the instrument. Davies, he's there. I was just talking about Harrison Davies, um, about how he needs his cover on either side of him. And I think that's the, the benefit he gets with McCartan. You're now going to see Francis trying to do it. Um, for, why is Francis... That looked like Francis was playing right back. I don't think he is playing right back. We brought him on to play left back. Yeah, he is. I think it was just because we were defending from a corner and he was just one of the players who was back. I don't think it's that he is deliberately lining up on that right-hand side. 
Oh, Renan was so close to getting in there. And a, a, an early ish goal, now we're down to 10 men, would be incredible. Costa Bile's in and he has the early ish goal. It's a third goal of the season for Roberto Costa Bile. He is one of the few in this squad who does look like a Premier League player on his day. I mean, he's not he's not tearing things up, but that is a very good finish. It was a Premier League finish. It's a lovely through ball from Richards. Lovely finish from Costa Bile. It's 1-0 after 11 minutes. And now, are we able to hold on? I mean, my assistant manager's saying go very defensive. I don't think we've got 80 minutes of very defensive in us, but... Maybe we can go and grab another goal or two because we are good going forward. Richards trying to skip past his man. They actually put two men on Richards there to stop him skipping into the penalty area. And somehow he didn't have the uh, the the mental capacity to just fall over as he gets scissored by a player coming in from either side. He's a nailed on penalty if he falls over. Um, but he's too honest. Tried to actually do, do things properly. A uh, bar back to Williams and now... Davies, Harrison Davies has got the right idea. Let's not faff around in our six yard box. I know I ask for short distribution, but there's short distribution and then there's silliness. If you give it to Barr, Barr should not be giving it back to Williams, and then Williams tapping it out again to the other centre back. We don't want short passing triangles between our goalkeeper and two defenders. By all means, roll it out and let them look up and distribute like Davies has done there. That's what I mean by playing it out short. And now Costa Bile is in again. Oh, the Villa defender has come across and just snuffed out the chance before Costa Bile can really get up to top speed. If he had have put the, the full burners on, it's a goal there because Costa Bile is quick. Um, and we've now conceded the equaliser. And I do worry that the rest of today's match might not go our way because obviously we're down to 10 men. It's all Nathan Curry's fault. We're going to put a big asterisk next to the, next to this one at the end of the season when we get relegated and it's by it's by three points because we didn't beat Villa at home when we were supposed to. We'll all be going to have a word with Nathan Curry, one of our most expensive players ever. I think he is the highest paid player at the club and it was just an absolute moment of madness. It's not even as if he was caught out of position, caught chasing back, preventing a goal-scoring opportunity or anything like that. It was practically on the halfway line. He's tackled someone thigh-high with both feet. It's going to be not just this ban. He's going to get an extended ban for it. It was violent conduct. It's ridiculous. Ali Basic looking to play Costa Bile in again. Costa Bile starting to get a little isolated up front as Renan and Richards are getting pinned back into this midfield four by Villa just constantly pushing on against us. Francis is intercepted nicely there, but all he can do is lump it forward, hoping that it gets to Costa Bile because everyone else is being pushed back so far. Williams makes the save from this shot from Villa, but this is a, a long period of extended pressure from Aston Villa here, and I think it probably inevitably ends in another goal for them, bar with the headed clearance from the corner, and we are clinging on to this 1-1 as we head into half time and we're going to have to have a little bit of a rethink and try and work out what we can do in this second half. Cause if it carries on like this, then uh, I just don't see how we do anything other than lose today. Hodgkinson is not having a very good game. What could we, we've got Collier on the bench who could just slot straight into that exact role. But it just seems silly to take off Kieran Hodgkinson when he is the best player at the club. So maybe what is his best role in central midfield? His best role is the exact one that he's playing. I was wondering if we could push him further forward and maybe swap the roles over and have Ali Basic playing a little bit deeper than him. Who's better at tackling? He's got a seven and he's got a seven. These, these lads are not making it easy for me. I don't see how it can hurt to swap them over for the second half. We get Hodgkinson a little more involved going forward. Ali Basic just be dropping a little bit deeper and seeing if he can have a go at pulling the strings. Because that's the thing. Hodgkinson's in there as the playmaker and has got the lowest rating of anyone in the team so far. So clearly he's not making much play. So let's see if Ali Basic has a little bit more luck. Um, we've we've been caught out like this a lot this season. I think we're going to have to change our corner instructions because the amount of times we have an attacking corner and it leads to a breakaway from the opposition. I think it was again, I think it was in the Norwich game where we lost 5-0. Two of their five goals directly came from us being attacking at corners. 
We do send both the centre backs forward. We also leave both full backs back. Although I guess if McCartan's taking it, maybe we're only leaving one man back. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we because Mc... but then previously Curry's taken. Co it's usually McCartan or Curry, and if they're both playing, yeah, I see where we're maybe going wrong with the corners now. Um, right, we are going to take off Kieran Hodgkinson. We gave him plenty of opportunity. He's not taking it. Hodgkinson can come off. Ali Basic can go back to being the more attacking option in there. Ola Richards is shattered. Um, Onyango can come on for him and we'll make Renan an inside forward on attack over here. Onyango can play on support. Just drop him back a little bit and we'll just swap these two over. And have McCartan seeing if he can get any joy down that side and we'll try this 20 minutes to go we're actually not doing too badly considering we spent the entire game down at 10 men the frustrating thing is knowing how well we've played with 10 men against this villa side makes me feel very confident that with 11 men for the entire match we would have won it and why is that saying renan is playing as an inverted winger on there it's definitely an inside forward that's just my assistant manager getting it wrong i think um right we have a throw. It's McCartan, finds Collier, who immediately gives the ball away, and now it's three on two. Another example of us not having enough men back. We are going to have to adjust the set-piece instructions. That's a lovely saving tackle from Barr. But <laughs> that was that all that was all caused by McCartan, our right back, taking the throw in on the left hand side. Which I mean he would because he was started the game as left back. So I needed to change that when I moved him over to right back. I guess. Um, but once again, we have a set piece, immediately give the ball away, and Villa are attacking again. Every time we have a set piece, it's so odd. We've relied on set pieces so much to get us to the Premier League. Now we're in the Premier League. I'm terrified of them. McCartan plays the free kick forward and doesn't find a home shot, but Renan wins the ball back. And now Onyango plays it back to <laughs> Sir Harrison Davies, who's so far forward, doesn't have a clue what to do. Francis has got to stop giving him the ball. Um, Davies plays it out looking for Onyango, but it shouldn't be Harrison Davies stood there in that playmaker role. Um, it's, again, led to a chance for Villa, us having a set piece. But Sir Collier needed to come over and take that ball off of Davies there and take over that role, and he didn't. And it's very frustrating. Right, 20 seconds to go. Fingers crossed we're not going to lose, which I guess when we went 10 men down, I was convinced we were going to. Let's have the whistle now, ref. If Villa score a last-minute goal, I'm going to be horrified. Um, it is Villa with the ball as we're just waiting and whistling for the end of this match. Big ball forward. Please don't let him get there. He doesn't get there. That is full time. You know what? Considering what Nathan Curry did to come out of that with a point, could end up being a very valuable point come the end of the season. But it does leave us in this situation where we're now on seven points from eight games, but our next three games are against Liverpool, Manchester United and Chelsea. You've got to expect us to lose all three of them. So by the time we come to this run where we've got Southampton, Leeds, Burnley, West Ham, Brighton, which there are some winnable games in there, but by the time we get there... We're going to be on, what, seven points from 11 games. We're going to be in that relegation zone. And we're going to, then going to go into that run of five, knowing we've got to win at least two of them and realistically probably three. And I don't know if there's three wins in that batch. All of which means it would be really handy if we could go to Liverpool now and somehow find a draw. Well, we've had an international break between these two games, which has given us a friendly to practice our new 4-3-3 counter-attacking system. It also means that with Nathan Curry suspended, uh, McCartan is also not fully fit and Zapata has come back from international duty injured. So it scuppers the plan slightly because there would be Zapata there and McCartan there if we were doing this properly. Uh, but we're going to do We're just going for it. We're going to try this. We're giving Cardona a first start. Because he's quick and having a quicker defender next to Davies might help. And I can't drop Harrison Davies. It's a little bit harsh on Joe Bart. He's not like painfully slow. But when you compare him to Harrison Davies, um, in fact, Davies is slightly quicker than Bar. Cardona might need to be in a bit more often because of his pace. Um, but we're going with Cardona at centre back. Uh, Jern Anderson's going to be in at right back. Uh, because he can play there. That's the criteria for today. With Curry and McCartan both unavailable, 
That's your criteria for right back. So Francis is going to be at left back. Akani's got to play at the base of the midfield because we don't really have anyone else who can do it. Um, I guess Anderson or Baha could play there. Not ideal, though. And then we're going Collier and Hodgkinson in the centre of midfield. Richards and Renan out wide. Costa Bile up front. We are counter-attacking. I hate every part of it. But if we can avoid getting absolutely smashed by Liverpool as a result of it, then I guess we, it's more important this season and this season only. This isn't going to be a long-term change of policy. But for this season, it's more important to try and stay in the Premier League than it is to try and play nice football. What I have realised we've not done, though, which does need very quickly fixing, we don't have Harrison Davies stood at the near post for corners. So there's uh, there's certain things that do still need to be done. Um, so let's get that near post. We want this near post. We've got to, we've got to play to our strengths. Um, so that's Davies there. Cardona can go there. Um, stick him on the goalkeeper. We need to have someone on the goalkeeper as well just to get in the way. There you go. We've got to make that one little change. It hasn't addressed the fact we're sending too many people forward for corners, but then I've not exactly set up a full corner routine there. I've just adjusted where we're aiming and who's standing where, and we've given away a penalty inside the first six minutes. What's the point? What is the point in me trying to play defensively when we keep self-inflicting damage on ourselves? Our last two games, we've had a player sent off. We had Connor Roberts sent off the game before the Villa game. Then we've had Curry sent off. Now we've given away a penalty in the first five minutes of a game against Liverpool. It's so much of it self-inflicted. Oh, it's so frustrating. Right, Alex Williams, make yourself a hero. I mean, you're already a hero. Make yourself more of a hero. It's going to be Alex Williams to try and make himself a superhero um, facing some Liverpool player. And he doesn't save it. And we're 1-0 down. And now, this is why I hate counter-attacking systems and anything remotely defensive. Because I'm now sat here, six minutes into this game, thinking, we need to score now to get anything out of this match. We're playing counter-attacking. At what point do we stop counter-attacking? And these kind of systems, they work. For me, my for my footballing mentality, they work fine while you're still drawing, if you're there playing for a draw, but the moment you go behind, all I want to do now is start attacking. We're two 0 down after eight minutes. We can't. We can't defend. We are not good enough to defend. So we now go back to this, but we start from this point with a two goal disadvantage, and now and now we're going to attack, and that means we're going to get absolutely ruined because we're now going to leave spaces in behind us. Uh, Renan has got a hold of the ball here nicely. Collier playing it over the top, looking for Richards. It's absolutely nowhere near him. And at 2-0 down, with less than 10 minutes on the clock, today's going to be a messy one, I think. I can only hope that Liverpool think, ah, you know what, 2 nils plenty. We don't need to overexert ourselves today. We've got a Champions League game coming up. Um, they're in fifth place. And I just hope they take their foot off the gas for the rest of the game now and let us not get too embarrassed. Because, like I was saying, if we go into this run of easier games that we've got coming up in a few matches' time, off the back of a load of thumpings, it doesn't matter how easy those games are. We know how important morale is in Football Manager. And if we go into those games off the back of three 5 nil defeats, we'll lose to, we'd lose to Posh. We'd lose to anyone. We would lose to anyone off the back of three 5 nil defeats. We're just not close to good enough to be in the Premier League. Remember when we got promoted and I gave the little speech about how it was great that we spent five years in the Championship because now we're going to go up and we've got a good enough squad that we won't we won't just come straight back down again. Can we go back and do a retrospective, a retroactive, whatever the word is? I want to edit that out. It was a lie. It was I was all hopeful and naive and dreaming. We are not close to good enough to staying in the Premier League. Um, I mean, as an example, I don't want to be harsh on Collier. This isn't me targeting Collier. Um, but I was looking at Collier the other day. Um, he's a League One player with the potential to play in the Premier League in the future. And he started the majority of our games. And he's one of our better midfielders. Um, Harrison Davies is a championship player. who will never be anything more than that. And he's our probably our third best player on star rating. We've got a couple of players who are ready for this level. Kieran Hodgkinson, 
theoretically is that he's having an awful season. I know we've played him in a few different positions, but he's averaging 6.5 this season. He's one of the few players who's a decent player for Premier League sides. And the rest of them are just a bunch of Championship and League One players. And that's for some of them, that's all they'll ever be. For some of them, they'll get better. None of it really helps this year, though, does it? Let's get Renan a bit further forward again. He can drop back a bit. And there, well, there's no point in saying, we'll just really load the left-hand side, I guess. Um, Kieran Hodgkinson's having a terrible game. Um, I don't want to play Ernie Grucock in, though, as, a, as an attacking midfielder. Likewise, I don't really want to bring on Colin O'Hara on the left. We loaned Micah Hamilton out. He's gone out on loan to Motherwell, I think he's gone to, uh, because he wasn't going to get game time. So we've let him leave. That might be a mistake. Uh, um, I'm so uninspired by my own bench here. Oh, no. Um, well, Collier can come up. Collier can come off for Grucock. We can do that because that lets us switch him to a ball, uh, ball winning midfielder and he can then be a playmaker. We might get a performance out of him as a playmaker. And then, I mean, Colin O'Hara. Oh, currently operating at a League Two level has the potential to be a championship player in the future. Ali Basic's going to come on up front. Players are pressing forward. He's he's done it a few times over the couple of years he's been with us. It's I don't think it's his best position. I don't think he's terrible at it. And it's sometimes nice to have a pressing forward just doing a lot of running around up there. I do like the fact Liverpool have very much taken their foot off the uh, off the accelerator for this second half, though. It's saved our blushes a little bit. Going to Liverpool and losing 2-0 as a newly promoted side isn't that bad. Who have we lost here? Kieran Hodgkinson's now injured. Phenomenal. He's broken his leg, hasn't he? Potential lower leg injury. If he's broken his leg, I'll see you in the championship in a few episodes' time, boys and girls. Shall we go and find out what the damage is? Okay, it's a tight calf. Why did you have to come off for a tight calf? What is wrong with you? Five without a win. Five, five without a win, and we now play Manchester United and Chelsea in back-to-back -back games. And then the... Easy games, the easy runs start with two away games. We'll be back. We'll be back for Birmingham because they came up with us. We'll do Birmingham and Everton tomorrow. How many games will we have played by then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on top of what we've already done. So we've done. So we'll be on 17 games at that point. We'll need. So we need to be to meet the Kev ratio. 10 points before the next episode. Is that even doable? So we're not going to beat United or Chelsea. We could potentially beat Burnley. Let's say three points from Burnley. We're getting relegated. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.